So I watched a movie that I think a lot of people need to see, or at least everyone needs to see. This is a movie a lot of people probably didn't want to see in theaters, but I think it's probably one of the best things to ever watch in theaters. It is a documentary so good that it needs to be in theaters. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about a documentary called They Shall Not Grow Old. It's all about World War One. It's all about the British soldiers' perspective and what they did during World War One. My friend and I are both 23, and we were probably the youngest people to watch this movie, or to watch it in the, in the movie theaters. Everyone else was probably 30 years old and older after that. But I think this is a movie everyone that can see it should see it. It is that good. There's a reason why they put a documentary into the movie theaters. It's just that good. So this this film, I guess we could call it, is um, is They Shall Not Grow Old, and it it's advertised as being World War One, but in color, and that's basically all they really sh talk about in the in the trailers that they show. And when my friend and I first saw this, and I think everyone in the theaters w was thinking the same way we were, when you see the trailer full of uh, color and stuff like that, it's like yeah, cool. And then when you actually see it, it starts out black and white. And for a while, it, it, it goes on black and white. And then I think everyone's at, at one specific point, everyone just says, where's the black and white? Or <laughs> where's the color, I mean. And then once everyone thinks that, boom, it just goes straight to color. And it looks beautiful. It's, it's kind of um, a Wizard of Oz kind of moment where it starts out black and white, and then it goes straight into color, and it's just, like, amazing. At the end of the of the, of the the documentary, it goes back to being black and white. It's very... The way they do it is very interesting. There's a very specific time when they show it black and white, and then once that time is over, it goes back to color. And it's just really, really good, especially when when they show the before and after footage of, of raw footage and then the remastered footage. It's, it's great. So They Shall Not Grow Old only shows the British soldier's point of view, um, but they do it really well. It's it's a first-person experience. They use, um, they don't use actors to, they don't reenact anything. It's all raw footage, and all the voices you hear, not including lip syncing, which I want to get into lip sync and, and lip dub, re like, it gets cool. Um, but in order to tell the story, they have, they went through hundreds, they have this thing that they show at the after the credits, behind the scenes, and they showed that they had hundreds upon hundreds of interviews with World War One veterans, and then they end up using a ton of it, because they show the audio clip, that they, all, all the audio clips they chop up and put together, and you just see hundreds of different voice clips, and when you watch um, They Shall Not Grow Old, you can see or you can hear, every single sentence is a different person talking. It's really cool. Going back to, um, they talk, this is only about British soldiers, but it's done really well, and it's not meant to be political. It's all about just the experience that the soldiers had, and it goes through the day-to-day -day life, like how they went to the bathroom, how they ate their food, and why, and everything like that, and they don't make it sound depressing. They make it what it really was. Sometimes it was fun, sometimes it was kind of miserable, Some it, it just goes all over the place, and it's just a very well done kind of way they, they show every single little detail, how they slept, and why they slept, and where they slept, and all this other stuff, it's great. So now I want to talk about the, the lip reading, because in the trailers you can see people talking and then you hear like someone voicing it over in the trailer, which is what they do in a lot of the, the uh, in a lot of the basically all the footage when someone's talking and it gets really interesting because what they did and they sh they don't show this in the documentary they show it in a in a in a little documentary like expose after the credits that they show us in theaters hopefully people can watch it at home eventually i'm sure they will it'll be on youtube within a year i'm sure what they did was they got professional lip readers after they retouched the footage they have lip readers basically just lip read what they what they think they're saying and what they did is they they would take this footage they would figure out what unit these people uh, were from based on the footage and where it was filmed and when it was filmed 
and all the little niche things like you know British soldiers from this area were issued this kind of equipment so they were probably from this unit and all this crazy stuff and they end up you know figuring out what region you're from and then they would have someone from that actual region be your voice actor or the the voiceover which I thought was really cool and it, it's kind of when I when I say this in my head it sounds really hard to understand I think but basically if you know as me someone from California had to voice me over they would find someone from California or if they knew you were from Texas they would have a of a, a voice actor from Texas come in and dub over that footage if that makes sense another thing I thought was really cool and I think everyone was really blown away by in the, the afterwards expose documentary thing was that when they were doing some of this footage, after they retouched it, they took this one piece of footage that they said was in like every World War One documentary ever, and it's a footage of um, just a, a British guy just reading a note. And after they were able to retouch the footage and remaster it, they were actually able to, to actually see very easily what he was saying, or very, kind of easily, but since he was at like a weird angle, you can only see like a part of his mouth like that. And they... they um, found out what unit he was in based on all that other stuff I said earlier and they ended up um, going through all these different they had a whole bunch of different pieces of paper that were the officers were issued that, that they would read to to lower enlisted soldiers and they ended up finding the exact note that this officer was reading the director literally just found a note and just started reading it and then he would match the audio of him reading it and just put it onto the screen and they found an exact match and it's it's just amazing like everything they do is is just it's, it's a lot of work that's the best way to put it they put a lot of work into it it's a passion project like no other it's it's artwork it's a, it's a masterpiece but one thing they they talk about is combat and they don't talk about it a lot they talk about it in depth two or three times and every time they do talk about the combat they show it in a in a kind of slightly different way I don't want to spoil it too much because this is actually in the documentary, not the expose afterwards, which is what I've been going off of mostly. But it's re it's it's interesting the way they show it because obviously, uh, in the documentary they talk about how um, they no one could film because they were using like the hand crank type of cameras, so they do some very interesting things to to show the combat. They use a lot of pictures. They obviously show a lot of the aftermath of what happens after transfers and after they, they fight and it's it's interesting I there's no better way to tackle it it's probably the biggest dilemma that the creators probably ever had was trying to figure out how they should show combat since there was barely any footage and all the footage of combat that they had is what they show and it's it's definitely interesting and it's honestly I don't want to say nerve-wracking, but it's it makes you nervous for for the people because you know there are there these are actual people running into no man's land and they're going it's it's crazy. But they obviously don't show uh, close-up combat. They end up showing a. It's very interesting. I don't want to spoil it too much. It's hard for me to talk about it without repeating the same thing. Without, yeah, moving on. Okay, so so the last thing I guess I should probably talk about is the sound effects. They're the best sound effects I've heard in any film, except maybe Star Wars, but that's, you know, kind of a different ball game. So f for, I know a lot of Foley artists do this when they make sound effects, but um, these people used real uh, pieces of artillery, they used the real rifles, they, they used real artillery, they actually, they don't talk about this in the documentary, but um, the documentary at the end of the credits, they ended up showing that they actually went to, I think, like the New Zealand National Guard or something, some some military training exercise, and they ended up um, placing microphones all downrange of uh, where all, all of these artillery is supposed to land, and they ended up just recording, like, artillery flybys and artillery incoming, and then just boom, and then they ended up showing where they placed it in the documentary, and it's just, like, for the documentary itself, the very first time you hear artillery, it is scary. There's nothing else to really say about it. Um, it's really just that good. Um, so they ended up using all sorts of these just really crazy things. There's not, it's not just constant sound effects. 
the voices of all the British soldiers talking is what really I think it's a, it's a big the big factor that conveys the overall story, and then the sound effects are what make it scarier or sadder or whatever. Um, and then of course the visuals help a lot. I, I guess one more thing about the visuals, because that's a huge part of the selling point of this documentary, is that um, the very second it went from black and white raw footage to color footage, everyone in the theater went, <gasps> oh. it, everyone made that noise. It was, <laughs> it was kind of cool. I. It's, it was just amazing to see something like that. But this is a documentary that it's not super violent. The internet, you know, is, is a much worse than this documentary. Um, it's just a well-made documentary. It's made so that anyone doesn't... You could have, like, a 10-year-old watch this, which you probably shouldn't do, but you can have a 10-year-old watch it, and they would understand everything the, that was on there. It's really easy to relate to everyone talking. It's really well done. There's no main character. Um... It's British soldiers talking about their what they did in the war, and then it shows footage of people doing that same thing in the war, and it just goes on like that until the very end. It it goes from when they all enlisted to training to combat and everything in in the war, and then what happens to everyone after the war, and it's it's depressing. It's not cry your heart out sad. It's depressing. I'm probably just start rambling on after this, so I'm probably just gonna cut it here. I'm all of the lag, and I'm out. a movie that I think a lot of people need to see, or everyone needs to see.